One of the other major projects that we've been working on in partnership with Cullen and with APN is, is feral pig management. Our feral pig project started about two years ago. We realised that a lot of the damages to story places, to cultural sites, to springs, waterholes, lagoons and the river systems and we realised that a lot of that damages were caused by pigs. So what we did was um, there was some biodiversity funding that was available. So our proposal was a feral pig project that covers from the Macarate all the way down to the Aracoon wetlands. Um, and within that area, after, after some initial assessments, we, I think we counted about 300,000 pigs. And I think that was the basis for us to, to really kick off the feral pig work. We spent a lot of time talking to people about the natural values and the cultural values of wetlands and trying to build that into a, prog a monitoring program. And we, we asked the simple question, what, what would have this wetland looked like before pigs? And we stood there with traditional owners and said, what would you have come here for? What, what are the things you would have collected out of this landscape? And those are the things that we sought to monitor. Um, so I think Justin's work is really important in, in terms of, I think, confirming what local knowledge we have. So local knowledge tells us that spring didn't look like us 10 years ago. Justin's science would confirm, yeah, it, it didn't look like that 10 years ago. Because right now the, the water's dirty and it's all the, the banks all dug up and it's, and there's less lilies now and it's, and, and, and there's no bush tucker, hardly any bush tucker. Um, I haven't eaten, eaten uh, the yam in three, three years. But I, I, I'd like to see more, more bush tucker for my, for my grandchildren and, and for, for their children. Um, they, they get in there and um, they rip all the soil up and um, in, in the lagoon. They get under there and they flip all the soil up and takes all the oxygen out of the water and they get dirty and no sun can't get through. So when no sun can get through, the little fishes and little creatures that live in it won't get any oxygen, won't get any sun, and they'll end up dying. The same with the soil. After this dry season, you guys are going to put fences around. Okay, so we've just uh, arrived at our site. We've got five sites across um, the, working with the Cullen Ranges and we've selected sample, um, we've selected paired lagoons where we've, we're going to fence off one lagoon and keep the other one um, unfenced so with the, the threats such as pigs and cattle can get into the to lagoon and cause the damage that we, we can see at these lagoons. Um, in the fence lagoon we'll get to see what happens when a, a lagoon recovers so we get a direct comparison between the threats which are pigs and cattle and horses and no threats and this, that way we can measure how effective the um, chosen control methods are. For example, at the moment people are spending a lot of money and time doing uh, trapping of pigs, on-ground culling and aerial culling. Um, we don't really know how effective that is for meeting their goals, which, is to, which are to make these wetlands healthier. So we're taking a, a pre-sample um, of soil and water to see how the, all of the living things in the soil change over time. Now they're settled into the methodology, uh, independently now going out and monitoring these wetlands. Um, so the, the whole idea was that you don't have to get um, scientists in here doing all of the work, that the rangers can do it themselves. And that's why we've been setting up these methodologies so that the rangers can manage the whole process from, uh, from the uh, monitoring for scientific purposes to monitoring for, for cultural and community purposes. I think it's, it's, it's good to get uh, some funding to improve the country and, and to look after the country. I think that when you look at the reporting system, you know, they, they want to hear about how much fences you've, you've fenced, how much piggers you've been shooting, um, you know, how much weeds you've sprayed. But well, one of the things that, um, that isn't really captured in these reports are, are, are some of the social outcomes. That's probably one of the, one of the best things I get out of the job is, is, to, um, 
is, is actually seeing the changes in people's lives. You know, um, coming off the welfare system into full-time work, um, using that, that, that income to, to start a business, using that income to, you know, to, 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 to put their kids through high school and to, and to go to university. And that's really important. Um, and I think that message should be, um, should be reported, you know, and that, that um, I think the government probably need to put a bit more emphasis around, about, around recording and letting groups, allowing groups to, to, to report on the social outcomes uh, that, that the project as a whole has, 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 have on, has had not, not only in the environment and um, um, but also on, on people's lives.